Lesson 9.3a, Exploring Areas of Composite Figures. A composite figure is a figure that is made of a combination of simple geometric shapes, like squares, rectangles, circles. Each composite figure can be separated in numerous ways. So this is kind of L-shaped. Here, it looks like we have a hexagon on top of a square. Here, so we have a square that's topped by half of a circle. We could split this into two rectangles, couldn't we? Separating composite figures one way may make more sense to us than another way. So we can split this composite figure into two rectangles, like this, smaller one and a much larger one. We could even bring our dotted line down like this and separate it into a very long rectangle and that rectangle. Now here we have a hexagon above a square. Now, would you want to find the area for six triangles and the area for a square? Or would you rather find the area for two trapezoids and a square or one rectangle and two triangles or a rectangle, a square, and two triangles? This would take a lot of work. Here we have a square with a semicircle on top. It wouldn't make sense to split it this way because now we need to find the area of two rectangles instead of just a square and a semicircle. Sam was plotting the shape of his garden on grid paper. While it was an irregular shape, it was perfect for his needs. Each square on the grid represents one square yard. And looking at the drawing, we can separate this figure into rectangles, a square, and a triangle. Then we can use a formula to find each area, then add the areas for a total area. We can use area equals length times width for the rectangles or even the square. We would need to use a triangle formula for the triangular piece. We add up all the areas to get a total area. So this is Sam's garden separated differently. Here we've got a long rectangle, a square, a rectangle, and a triangle. Here we have a little square, a bigger rectangle, a smaller rectangle, and a triangle. For this one, we're going to do, for the square, we're going to do side times side. It's got a side of five and a side of 5, so we do 5 times 5, we get 25. For this one, we do length times width, we get 3 times 8. For this one, we get 5 times 3. And for the triangle, we can do half times the base times the height, or it's the same thing as the base times the height divided by 2. So we've got a base of 4 and a height of 3, that would be 12. When we divide it by 2, we get a 6. We add all the separated pieces, all the areas together, we get 70 yards squared. Now if we did it this way, we'd have 3 times 3, which is 9, 8 times 5, which is 40, 5 times 3, which is 15, and our 6 for our triangle, we'd still get 70 yards squared. Either way, the total area is the same. We can find the area of this composite figure by finding two areas and adding them for a total area. We can separate it right here into this little rectangle and this big rectangle. We can do 3 times 2 for this area, which is 6, and we can do 6 times this 3, which is 18. We add them together and we get 24 units squared. But we can also find its area by thinking of it as one big, large quadrilateral, finding the area, then subtracting this missing part. We can pretend like this piece is there and just do the 6 times 5, which is 30, then subtract the 3 times 2, which is 6. Either way, we're going to get 24 units squared. To be efficient, we want to make the least number of separations. So here, we can look at this as one big rectangle and two triangles. That's three calculations. We could also look at it as 
two trapezoids and a square. That's three calculations. But look, if we split it up this way, we're going to have to do four calculations. Two triangles, a rectangle, and a square. So, using common sense, the least number of separations will require fewer calculations. Less math will go faster. Some of you might think this is easier. Some of you might think this is easier. Personally, I think this is easier. Okay, we finished the first part. We're going to move on to finding the area of a composite figure. I hope the rest of your day is wonderful, and I hope you join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.